What's up guys, it's Thundershark115, and today, we are going to be answering the question that everyone has been asking since the game released. Is Black Ops 4 Zombies good or bad? Now, the thing is, I was actually planning on having this review as part of one video, but the thing is, I recorded about half the segments, and either the video was already an hour long or is about to be and I hadn't even recorded half the segments I was going to do so I just thought about how I didn't want to have y'all sit through like a two to three hour video for a review which is why I made an executive decision and instead decided to do this video episodically where I'd have multiple episodes where each one I'd focus on a different aspect of Black Ops 4 Zombies. And then, at the end of it, I'll reconvene, quickly summarize all my points, and give my final verdict on Black Ops 4 Zombies. So yeah, I am so sorry that this review took so long to come out. I know y'all have been waiting desperately for this. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Part 1. Build-up and release. So, the build-up and release of Black Ops 4 was, uh... Well, let's just say interesting. So, in March, they dropped the teaser trailer, teasing Black Ops 4, and in May, they had this big reveal event during Zombies. They said that they announced three maps, Voyage of Despair, Nine, and Blood of the Dead. They announced the Chaos Story, as well as a couple of features that sounded pretty cool. What's this? Callings? Things I can do to bring me back? to Black Ops 4 and give me daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly content. We're also introducing limited time created challenges that we're naming Callings, which will regularly introduce new ways for you to play the game and set the stage for ongoing seasonal content and a few themed experience surprises as well along the way. And as we give our fans more power and ways to play, we're aware that zombies can sometimes be eh, a little bit intimidating to new players. Holy crap! Zombies factions? Wow, I, I can't wait to see what this is going to be all about. Custom mutations, Black Ops authenticity stamp system? Holy shit, they're bringing out all the big guns this year. And then we start hearing more news as the year goes on. Black Ops Pass, Rush Development, more focus on Battle Royale, taking focus away from zombies and multiplayer, lack of a campaign. Things really weren't looking good. At least for Black Ops 4 as a whole, but surely zombies would still be good. I mean, that's been one of the core staples of every Treyarch, of every Treyarch COD game since World at War. And then the game releases and... Oh, what the fuck? Oh my gosh. Never have I seen a game launch this buggy since Halo MCC. It is super bad. There's problems with basically every aspect of the game. Lag, low tick rate on the servers, but when it comes to zombies, it is unstable. It was so unstable when it launched. You got people just blue screening left and right. It, it's, it's, uh, you, you have to... No, dude. Oh my god, Oh my god! Dude. Games crashing. Now, thankfully, I didn't really run into these issues that much, at least not the ones that straight up caused the game to crash. I'm not sure if it was because it was working fine on Xbox One, at least in terms of crashes, or if I was just happened to have good luck, but a lot of people were raging. Like, you couldn't get to high rounds because the game would crash, and you couldn't do Easter eggs because by the the amount of by the time you spent that much time setting up, the game would become unstable and crash, and it just pissed so many people off. Not to mention, it was pretty buggy as well. Paint shop didn't work, so many features didn't work at all. Sometimes guns weren't giving ammo when they should have, when certain attachments or customization was equipped. And sometimes you would set some attachments and then it would completely change up what you had after you left the lobby. And the game was also pretty unbalanced as well. Well, for starters, you only started with 150 health, or enough health to survive three hits, and you had no way of increasing it, like in past games, meaning you're basically stuck at three hits, which kind of sucks. Granted, there was armor from activating your specialist weapon, but I, you didn't really have a jug perk, which I'll talk more about when I get to the gameplay changes part of this review, but it is super annoying. It was super annoying because, like, once you got to this higher rounds, you had to be super good to survive, simply because if you took three hits, you're dead. That's it. 
and yeah, there are some more crutch perks as well as the specialist weapons, but still, like, if you're playing without those stuff, you're, you're gonna die. Couple that with tigers on nine that could one-shot you, and then of course there was the dogs on Blood of the Dead that ran with the speed of intensity of Sonic the Hedgehog on crack on Voyage of Despair and on nine, but especially Voyage of Despair, you had catalyst spawning left and right, and back then they were complete bullet sponges. I mean, like, you could put, like, a whole mag into, like, a freaking fire catalyst, and it just wouldn't die. It, it, it's just, it was just a super big clusterfuck. I mean, yeah, I had fun with it, but it, it's just annoying and just overwhelming to deal with all this stuff. Not to mention, a lot of the features that they promised at the reveal event were either missing or underwhelming. Like, for example, the new custom mutations feature, you can only use them in custom games, I kind of figured that, but you couldn't do things like easter eggs. Like, at the beginning, I guess that would have made sense, because you didn't want people to find them in custom mutations, but like, after they found them, couldn't they just like, patch it so that you could do it, do the easter eggs, but with all your crazy settings like, quadruple blight fathers, or pistols only, or whatever? That would have been nice, but no, they didn't do that. Plus, you can't rank up or unlock anything other than Nebulae and Plasma in custom mutations, meaning most of the time people aren't even going to touch the mode. Uh, let's see, leaderboards were missing for quite a long time. Heck, they even promised, like, about a week after the game release, they promised that within the next couple days, we'll bring back leaderboards. And it took them a couple months to do so. Callings? Well, I mean, there was a seasonal calling for Halloween and one for Christmas of that year. And for a time, there were daily callings, but then they got replaced with contracts, and we haven't seen the callings since. Oh yeah, factions mode? It's gone. Seriously. Treyarch just straight up fucking lied to us about factions because it was not in the game at launch. Then they promised that it would be part of Grand Heist, and then it wasn't part of Grand Heist, and they promised it would be the one after Grand Heist, which was Spectre Rising, and then it wasn't in Spectre Rising, and now they've just been completely radio silent on the issue ever since. Like, seriously, where the hell is factions? Where is this feature that you promised to us, that you advertised to us? Why did you fucking lie to us? And I know some people say that, oh, it just got repackaged into contracts, or, well, there were some development issues and now they can't have it. Well, if that's the case, why don't they just freaking tell us? It would just be so nice if they would just communicate to us on the issue and tell us, hey, listen, we know factions, you all were excited for it, but unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, we won't be able to add it to the game, so sadly it won't be coming. At least then we'll have some closure on the issue, but no, they just keep us pissing in the wind. It's annoying. It's false advertising. Like, seriously, they just, you were fucking lied to about faction. It wasn't in the game at launch, and it's still not in the game, and we're two months after the release of Modern Warfare, which is the one that comes after Black Ops 4. Seriously, one year in, and you still don't have this feature that you promised to us back in May of 2018? Really, Treyarch? Honestly, I still don't know if I'm gonna buy COD 2020 if they if they just fucking lie to us like this. Okay, but anyways, back to the bugginess and incompleteness of the game. Uh, there's been a lot of theories circling the internet is because the game actually released one month earlier than it usually does. In the past, Call of Duty has always released in November. However, in Black Ops 4, they decided to launch it in October a month earlier, and this was likely so that Activision could compete with the release of Red Dead Redemption 2, and honestly, I feel like this would make a lot of sense because then they would have to rush the development and put it on shelves before the game is actually ready, because it, it, it really it should not have launched in this state. I honestly feel like Treyarch and Activision should have seen that, hey, th that's not where we need it to be, let's, let's push back the release a bit and get this right. But no, they just rushed it out on the store shelves for $60 plus 50 for a Black Ops Pass, and yeah, they, they just took your money and gave you an incomplete game, and granted, yeah, they updated it later, and now it's much better than it was at launch, but still, when you release a game, when it has a full release and you pay money for it, that's it. The game should be finished. It should be complete. 
and yet it wasn't. So many features were missing or broken. The game itself was broken, and it was just unacceptable. And that is absolutely unacceptable. Sod off. Like I said, this has got to be the worst video game launch in history since Halo Master Chief Collection because it is super unacceptable. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video off here. This this is one of the shorter videos in this series because there really wasn't too much to cover with the build up and release, but I figured it was important for context. But yeah, if y'all enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe for more and stay tuned for part two. I, I'm so sorry this took so long to come out, but I figured doing them in this format where I release them as episodes of a series would be better than one, like, long two-hour video. So, yeah. So, stay tuned. I'll probably have the next video up in about a week or two. So, yeah. Tell me what you think of the build-up and release of Black Ops 4 in the comments below. And that's it. Peace!